What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster back here on this Saturday night, March 18th, 2023. It's about 9.55 p.m. Here in the uh, state of California, the latest quake shows some movement down into the uh, Chile area once again with a 2.7. Quite the uptick in movement out here along the areas of the Pacific Plate. Quite frankly, all over the place except for the Java Trench. And up around the Kuro Kamachaka Trench. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some updated stuff first from the GeoNet servers. Uh, looks like they did put out a uh, earthquake news event here uh, in regards to the earthquake swarm that's been uh, taking place up there around the North Island, New Zealand. Had a pretty good intense earthquake swarm up here uh, around the Bay of Plenty just to the south inland. Uh, but it looks as though they put out this notification here a few hours ago and they chatted about the amount of earthquake activity 600 earthquakes uh, including eight earthquakes over magnitude 4 m4 uh, of course we did have some fives in there as well uh, it did create uh, quite a bit of um, curiosity as to what was going on um, and they believe similar to what i had stated earlier in my update this morning uh, about uh, just purely plate tectonic stress in the area. Uh, looks like earthquake swarms are quite common in New Zealand, according to the GeoNet server here. Um, swarms are just a collection of quakes about the same size happening in a localized area, uh, usually over a short period of time. That makes sense, right? Um, swarms nor normally don't have a main shock or a larger quake that starts off a sequence. So there's no aftershock activity, just a bunch of little quakes. Uh, but there's always, like in my mindset, there's always the threat of potentially something bigger happening due to increasing seismic activity that's causing this swarming, right? If you think about it. But it looks like back in 2018, 2019, um, there was some swarms out here around this area as well uh, that lasted for several days. Uh, so swarms are a common feature of the central volcanic region in New Zealand. Uh, but they do mention here swarms with a number of M4 events are relatively infrequent. So, uh, why are these earthquakes described as light shaking? Well, okay, we don't need to go into that. But I will include the link here for you guys. I don't want to cover too much on this. But I'm glad somebody decided to put out uh, a little newsworthy article in regards to the earthquake swarm down there. Uh, so yeah, I'll leave this link here in the comments below or the description below, I should say, uh, so you guys can go check it out. Right now, uh, nothing showing up here from the USGS in regards to earthquake activity. Uh, there is still some movement taking place down there, according to the EMSC. Let's go ahead and go back here to the uh, GeoNet server earthquakes here, and we'll take a look and see what's going on here across the New Zealand area. Uh, looks like some twos. Over the last hour or so, 2.5 within that general swarm area. Uh, there's a 2.4, 1.8. Still, there's a lot of earthquakes here adding on to that 600 number that they threw out. So this could continue for a little while. Doesn't look like there's any uh, larger quakes taking place. Besides from uh, from two, some twos and a bunch of ones and occasional three or so. Uh, at least looking at this list over the past couple hours. So we'll continue to watch it. Either way, when swarming's taking place, I've always been one to uh, take note, um, just in general, because that's seismic pressure building up down there. Uh, and indeed, a lot of this earthquake activity showed up over the last 24 hours there, quite a bit, folks. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that and see how it plays out. But they don't believe it's vol volcanic. They don't believe it's geothermal. Uh, kind of what I had mentioned earlier this morning, nothing more than just general plate stress down here uh, in the area but we'll continue to watch that uh, a lot of those earthquakes did show up there across the seismograph stations all right uh let's back out of here see what we got going on we got california lighting up out here um <clears throat> also down off the tip of the baja california area into uh, a little fracture zone out here just south of the tip of baja um close to the gulf of uh, california Getting a swarm of activity. Just want to make sure my bells are off. Yes, they are. Uh, and this has been kind of ongoing here for a little while. We had some yesterday and the day before that. Quite a few 
fours out there. Now, we, we don't really see too much large-scale activity out here because it's a divergent boundary uh, separation of the oceanic crust out here, similar to what we would see uh, along any divergent boundary such as Mid-Atlantic Ridge and areas down south of here, but they're still increasing. Uh, we got one here within the last hour of 4.2, so that could be um, some science up north of some uh, further pressure gradients building up here along Southern California. I uh, do have a little bit of movement here into the San Bernardino Mountains. Looks like a 2.1 near the Big Bear City area of Southern California. Relatively shallow, negative uh, 0.2 kilometers there off of the uh, Old Woman Fault Springs, it looks like. Old Woman Springs Fault. There we go. Kind of said that backwards. Uh, so a little bit of activity still taking place. There's no swarming kicking up here. Uh, this is definitely an area we don't want to see swarming. Of course, we did see this activity earlier. Uh, this morning, just off the Brawley Seismic Zone, a couple threes uh, and some other smaller quakes there, just to the south e uh, southwest of the San Andreas Fault, and that's going to be the southern segment. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that and see how it plays out. Uh, getting a swarm of earthquake activity, once again, centered around this area of California and Nevada. It looks as though the swarming is starting to migrate further inland, uh, and that would make sense with the general stress out here amongst the plate. Uh, but this has been, uh, man, this has been a very active region here uh, over the last week or so. Zooming in specifically for this swarm area, got about 89 earthquakes of all different magnitudes. And uh, most of it has been centered around the White Mountains area here in California off of the Fish Lake Valley Fault Zone. It's kind of a somewhat of a smaller fault. does run into the Death Valley Fault Zone down here. Um, a little bit further south here, northern Death Valley Fault Zone. Uh, there has been historical earthquake activity recorded up there. I think they were around the 5 or 6 range. But either way, uh, an overall sign of pressure out here amongst the plate boundary, which, of course, runs through a good portion of California here. Uh, around the Bay Area, a little bit of movement off of the Calaveras Fault Zone, which sits here outside of San Jose to the south. Runs into uh, the San Andreas Fault here along the plate boundary. Nothing major, just some small, uh, small microquake earthquake activity taking place. Um, up here in Clear Lake, California, south of Clear Lake, I should say, around the Cobb Mountain area. Uh, this is just hydrothermal operations in full swing there in the volcanic uh, field. Nothing going on specifically throughout the Pacific Northwest. Let me uh, take a look here at the Tremor map and see what we have. 116 epicenters of Tremor. That kind of puts an end to the... Uh, had pretty much like a week period of no Tremor. And tonight, a little bit uh, different. Down at the southern end here of the Cascadia. So that could be an obvious sign here of some, pending pre or, uh, some pressure out here amongst the Cascadia subduction zone. We'll continue to watch that see how that plays out as well uh, nothing going on across the east over here into the south america region things been rocking and rolling of course with that 6.8 did see a 4.6 here into the pru chile trench a little bit further south and some other quakes out there as well some twos and threes around the peru or the uh the chile area into the peru chile trench so continue to watch this region showing heightened activity following that 6.8 there in ecuador uh this morning Getting some deeper movement, it looks like, into the... Oh goodness, where is that? This kind of up here off the uh, Costa Rica area, it kind of looks like, into the Middle America Trench there on the globe. A little bit of... Uh, actually, that's further south of there. That's going to be uh, right off the coast of Panama. Either way, somewhat deeper quake, 2.9, 153 kilometers deep. Again, watch this area, folks. It's been uh, definitely elevated here recently across the eastern pacific and adjacent plates up into the alaska region uh further up north a little bit of spotty activity across the cook inlet and of course over here around the volcanoes the tanaga and the takawanga volcano um generally about uh well a little bit less than what we've seen here over the last week or so far as earthquake activity goes no major changes uh to take note there in the region though uh one earthquake this morning, further to the west along the Aleutian Trench, still waiting here along the Kuro Kamchaka Trench, 
We do have one earthquake there from uh, this morning, a 4.4, 61 kilometers deep. But overall, goodness, it's just been awfully quiet. And that's the big one up there. That's a big trench. Uh, around the Indonesia area, Papua New Guinea, getting some fours. Fours appear to be the magic number out here today. And uh, as you can see, it's kind of cluttered out here. Across the Banda Sea, the Maluka Sea region. Halting here at the mid-Java Trench area. Uh, still waiting for some potential movement along this area as well. Uh, we have seen some small moderate, small to moderate earthquake activity here over the past couple days. But uh, this, this is another zone that uh, has built up pressure. And probably uh, getting ready for a, a large quake in that region. Across the Mediterranean, a little bit more active today than uh, what we've seen yesterday. Turkey earthquake activity continuing uh, with some twos generally across uh, the Mediterranean. Uh, also out here in the Strait, just off the coast of the uh, Morocco area. Things are very quiet across the Atlantic Ocean for now. Uh, let's check out Yellowstone National Park, see what's going on. We'll get this uh, done with. Not a whole lot of activity, it looks like. Uh, there's the signature from the 6.8 showing up all across the park here in Wyoming uh, was not felt but remember those uh, earthquakes create uh, vibrational frequencies and they travel uh, around the globe quite often on these larger events picking up pretty nicely here across the Maple Creek area of Yellowstone since then a handful of earthquakes nothing major just some uh, very small uh, specks of an earthquake it looks like of earthquakes all right uh, see what else we got space weather activity we do have a pretty interesting little sunspot notice here we go that's what i'm talking about the uh, daily radio blackout those look like vampire teeth if you really look at it um but yeah we're entering into that time where the earth's um into the well i should say in the way of the spacecraft that monitors the solar data here the sdo um so that's that's what we're seeing there, a little shadow of it. Pretty neat. Notice the curvature here of the Earth um, covering up the sun. That's quite the image. There's our sunspot that we're looking at. Um, let's go ahead and check that out real quick. 3256. Most recent imagery here. Goodness, blasting out um, this whole region. Very active here with numerous sunspots behind the main uh, area. This is going to be one to watch here, folks, in the coming days. Right now, uh, look, look down here, even uh, quite the complex system there with that uh, sunspot group. Right now, we got 95% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25% chance, a little bit elevated, uh, X flare at 1% chance. Uh, we do have a coronal hole uh, right here, kind of getting into position as, as it's facing and rotating here to the Earth view. I don't think this is going to play a major part, though, uh, in far as any geomagnetic activity. Um, in the forecast so we'll continue to watch it though it's, i think it's a little bit pointed too far south but uh, either way we'll update it once uh, the folks there continue to uh, um, provide updates as far as the auroras go but a big one definitely got to watch that sunspot right there that's pretty crazy maybe could could be uh, very active here coming up next week all right uh let's see here Aurora forecast right now looks fairly minimal. Um, just maybe 10, 30% chance or so of auroras up there in Canada, northern Alaska. But other than that, things are uh, fairly quiet on the sun for now. But don't let the quietness fool you. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have yourself a, a wonderful night. And um, it looks as though some of these uh, seismograph stations are, again offline and um they did that last weekend and they weren't fixed until sometime monday i'm just adjusting the globe here for 24 hour period 24 hour earthquake activity it's a little bit better uh, and as you can see it's still obviously pretty active look at that 4.8 that came in uh, earlier this afternoon return a deeper movement there across the fiji and the tonga trench areas uh, so anyway, yeah, back to the uh, seismographs. We'll wait uh, and see if they get reset probably Monday morning or so. It looks like maybe one of them's coming back online. Uh, so yeah, we'll just kind of watch them and see how they play out. This seems to be a common occurrence here on the weekends. 
All right, folks, have yourself a good night. Catch you guys back here sometime early tomorrow morning. Take care.